This is a home video of my family from back in the 80s. Here's my grandpa writing up blessings on pieces of red paper for putting up on the walls later as a part of uh, the Chinese New Year celebration. At the time, I was too young to be able to read these things. I knew maybe a hundred Chinese characters back then, and there are literally tens of thousands of them. Now, even as an adult, there are still times that I'll come across Chinese characters that I don't recognize. But unlike in English, where it's more common for me to see a word that I don't recognize, but I'm able to sound it out without knowing what it means, when I'm reading in Chinese, it's more common for me to know what a certain character means, even though I don't know what it sounds like. If Chinese and English readers processes the two languages in such different ways, can this affect dyslexia manifest itself in people who have trouble reading the two languages? Inside Science. To learn more about reading and dyslexia, I went to the University of Maryland in College Park to meet with Professor Bolger. He's going to explain to us how exactly do we learn how to read. Reading is built on so many different skills and abilities. A, you know, very low level from attention, working memory, auditory capacity, visual capacity, even our motor capacity. That reading is really built upon these skills. And then you add language and the ability to break apart language into sounds. And then to, to link those sounds with, with some visual object. Learning a language is like learning how to ride a bike. It may seem like a skill all by itself, but you're actually learning how to do a bunch of smaller things, like how to pedal, and how to brake, and how to steer and balance, all at the same time. On the other hand, if I somehow just can't learn how to ride a bike, that can also mean one of many things. Maybe it's because my legs are too short to reach the pedals, or maybe I'm just bad at balancing. And being dyslexic is kind of like that as well. There are so many skills and abilities that if something goes awry in, that would then set off a, a cascade effect that a child would fail to develop reading. Because Chinese, at least in its written form, it's so uniquely different from other phonetic languages, which is pretty much all other languages. It requires quite a unique range of cognitive processes when you're reading it. When we read in English, the primary areas that we tend to focus on uh, in terms of reading are areas of the left hemisphere. Uh, reading in Chinese, also utilizes uh, those same regions, but also kind of has an additional uh, heavy recruitment of right hemisphere visual regions. The argument for why is there this additional right hemisphere recruitment may have to do with the nature of the visual spatial processing of Chinese characters. Chinese is the only existing language that's still 100% logographic. Of course, there are other languages who are also at least partly logographic, uh, such as Korean or Japanese. But both of these languages are also complemented by a phonetic system. Chinese, on the other hand, unless you're reading a children's book, which sometimes have pronunciation guides called pinyin for the more difficult characters, you're pretty much out of luck. They are complex characters, almost like human faces, which seem to be processed very similarly in the right hemisphere. Um, that the spatial layout of them is complex but and important in terms of identifying you know, your face from another person's face. So if you tend to have trouble remembering people's faces at parties, you may have similar difficulties recognizing Chinese characters. On the other hand, if you're dyslexic in English because you specifically have problem with spelling, you may not have the same problem reading Chinese. Now, of course, that was a gross simplification of the problem, but the bottom line is, since Chinese and English are so different from each other, it's certainly possible for someone to be dyslexic in one but not the other. And this distinction is true even among phonetic languages. Uh, look at English and Spanish, for example. While they're definitely not as different from each other as English versus Chinese, they're still both unique, at least in some subtle ways. Reading in English, is um, one that is particularly difficult because we have this alphabetic system. You have E-I-G-H or you know, A-I also making the A sound, right? So, you know, eight or rain, you know, you, as well as you have like E-A-T, may say eat or beat and, you know, seat, but also says, you know, et and sweat and threat. And then it also says great, you know, E-A-T is in the word great. So it's, we have these irregularities in the English uh, system that basically make it much more complex. Now, the question of 
say other languages like Korean, which is very regular, or Italian, which is very regular. You know, you have the spelling sound relationships are very consistent. And so I think what you end up seeing is, is a, a high rate of disability in, especially in the, say the English language, because of these um, particular inconsistencies in terms of, and because of so many borrowed words. So there you go, reading and dyslexia. Just like any cognitive process that we do every day without knowing exactly how we do them, it can get quite complex and granular when we try to break it down. As for me, it's Chinese New Year today, so I'm gonna go meet with some of my friends to have some hot pot tonight. I've been your host, Yun Yu, and this is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.